All right, I'm gonna give you a really awesome piece of advice. So for this is for people who are really trying to get that top score. The odds of you seeing some weird geometry question are pretty good. And we have a weird one, right? We can tell we got a, a circle, but then we also got this weird shape in the middle. Now, anytime we have weird shapes, our goal should be to get back to basics because we understand geometry when it's in its basic form, right? So that's circles, triangles, rectangles. Those three shapes, those basic shapes, cover pretty much every geometry situation imaginable. So we want to get back to that basic place. Now that's still difficult. Some of you may see it. But there's lots of places where you're going to start drawing lines and connecting some dots. That's our, our goal, basically. My advice, whenever you have a circle, a weird circle, start drawing radiuses, okay? Just don't worry about why, just do it, right? So anytime you see a place where you can connect some dots and make a radius, you should do it. So a lot of people do this. They draw a line here and they get stuck because they're like, well, that doesn't really help me. It doesn't help you because that's not a radius. The reason a radius is good is a radius is predictable. So watch, the one radius I can draw is going to be to connect A and P. And when I do, you can see, I'm going to shade it, we have a triangle. And what's important about this triangle, we have two of them, but that I'm shading one. What's important about this triangle is because we drew a radius, we know that this side up here is equivalent to this side up here because radiuses are predictable. They're all the same length. So that is the advantage of a radius, is it's not just that you're connecting dots. It's that you're connecting dots in a way that really gets you somewhere. So if we have those two lines congruent, the same, then we know because of the isosceles triangle rule, isosceles, that this angle here, ugh, now I wish I hadn't shaded, this angle here is equivalent to this angle here, right? So in an isosceles triangle, let me draw a less weird one. In an isosceles triangle, what we have is we have two angles that are the same, and they are opposite to uh, sides that are the same. Two angles, two sides, the same, and they're opposite each other. So we know now that this angle here is also 20 degrees. And because of the rules of triangles, that means, what's a good letter here, or a good color? Let's do this. That means this angle at the top of the triangle is going to be whatever's left over. So we've got 180 in the triangle. We've got two 20s accounted for. So that means that's 140. And the other triangle, the one that's not shaded, is also going to have a 140 degree angle. So now, big picture, the whole, uh, let's draw it like this, the whole central point, including the X, is its own like mini circle. And circles have 360 degrees. We've got 140 twice. And that's going to leave us with x, so that's 360 minus 280, which is 80, and that's the answer. So that's x. So I love this question because if you if you kind of know this strategy, draw radiuses, radii, whatever you want to say if you're Latin or Greek. Um, so it's a good strategy. It works on all sorts of weird shapes, and it, it's just a good example of like if you take a bunch of SATs, eventually there's not a lot of stuff they can throw at you that you haven't seen before. And that's kind of where I've come up with this. This is not like a huge groundbreaking strategy, but it's just like I've seen many, many all geometry questions, lots of them with circles, and this is just like a tried and true method. Draw some radiuses, see what comes out of it. Odds are good you'll find a triangle or some other shape, and from there you can just solve. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully if you do see some weird geometry question on your own SAT, you can remember that and draw up some radiuses.